What's up everyone? We are back on another ride. This is race day again. Off we go. This is in a nice valley. The temperature was perfect. It was like 10, 12 degrees Celsius and a bit of rain that came down. So the traction was really, really good. I did have a bit of fogging going on with my goggles. It was this mix of like hot, humid, steamy air coming up. But otherwise, fantastic race day. As we know, we're still on the KX250 hunting down what my next bike will be. In my last video, we looked at the CRF 250RX, and this time we're going to check out the FE350, which comes in a few models, so we're going to touch on all of them because it just seems simpler. First up is the W, and what steps this apart realistically compared to the non-W version is the sixth gear. A lot of people mentioned in the last video they wish the 250RX had a sixth gear. And it is kind of nice that the Husky has an option for a sixth gear. Obviously they tweak a few things, but this newest model definitely outputs the most amount of performance it's ever done. They've changed the engine design, they've got a dual overhead cam cylinder, so everything's got good performance, good reliability to it. It's got an 88 mil bore cylinder and it's gonna perform extremely strong power and especially right out of the bottom with that kind of setup. The new frame on the 350W is similar to all the other ones where you've got the frame with a chromium all you've done and blah blah blah. It's a steel frame, it works well, it's a lot smaller, more low profile than what you get with an aluminum frame. And then in the rear, back end of it you actually have a hybrid subframe they call it so this one's made from plastic and aluminum now it's polymed so it's actually better quality than just cheap old plastic like you'll be able to lift the whole bike with this kind of thing but you're going to get a super low weight with that durability so the back end is only like four pounds which is pretty solid obviously we're never too concerned about weight i do a lot of mountain bike videos and weight is a big thing when we're looking at a 250, 350, 450, we do gain in weight, but it's not huge until you really get to those big bikes higher than the 450. The swing arm is a die cast aluminum one on this one. So, uh, you know, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. It will be lighter weight, but I mean, they're even saying that only 190 grams. So it's like, I could change the grips on a bike to gain that much weight. Bodywork obviously on these things looks great. The plastics look really good. Cool thing about the 350W is it does come with the WP Exact front forks. So this one has a closed cartridge design and it's going to be way more durable and higher performing than the MX version. So essentially, because MX is again so smooth essentially compared to off-road where you're getting random bumps the racetrack's changing drastically over the time this thing is going to hold up and perform much better than that perfectly smooth jump find perfect line that you would from like a supercross motocross style of track it has the exact rear shock as well from wp so it's lighter and smaller than previous years but you do get good rebound settings and compression settings all by hand so that's really nice to be able to adjust both of those very quickly off the top especially each racetrack is different so it's not just like an mx track where it's kind of this soft mud this is dry mud these can change throughout it so it's really cool that you can change it on race day do a little test section and be like oh you know what i want a little softer today or a little stiffer or a little faster responding hydraulic disc brakes obviously this is coming on most bikes now getting rid of the cable and the hydraulic clutch hydraulic disc brake and 260 mil rotors which work they will stop you very big rotors they will stop you very very easily it doesn't have a rotor guard on it which i don't think is super critical but it's a little note compared to like the crf 250rx it does come with features like that whereas a husqvarna for a little bit more money actually doesn't even come with it now this is a w model i'm talking about so it's not as necessary this is more the adventure race bike as opposed to the race adventure bike that i count the 250rx from honda on but it's worth noting that it doesn't have some of those kind of creature comfort features and it's only a plastic guard so it's not like it's indestructible but it does add a little bit of a preventative 
issues with it. The hydraulic clutch, lots of people have been liking that. Obviously KTM's been running those for a long time now and they work really, really well. Uh, the new triple clamps look really good, black anodized. They've got a new 22 millimeter offset to provide the perfect harmony between frame dynamic. Like it's essentially, they've just tweaked the design, pushed it forward a little bit so it, it breaks out that front fork and the more optimal range than it ever has. The footrests on these ones are really cool. They are really oversized, which even in the pitches, you can tell they're a lot wider, a lot longer out, which shouldn't be too much of an issue for like width. Obviously, your whole bike is still wider than them, but more foot control. It is all over the place on some of these tracks. Some of these hills, like you're seeing, are up and down and up and down, and your foot kind of gets kicked off, so it's really cool to get something on that, which is a little bit bigger. So the 350W, features a 42 mil throttle body so it's going to be fast but it's going to be super controllable that size it means it's going to just kind of open it up with a controlled feel probably a little bit more too strokey having it such a wide size but it's not obviously going to be too stroke they have those instant wrap to torque this thing should still open up pretty low revs and then build itself up no problem electric star obviously lithium ion pretty much a shoe in right now that electric start if you don't have electric start i know suzuki is like the last holdout but it's it's worth it all the way if you fall if you stall like you can just get going so much faster my life starts here and what hands on our head or sometimes we do fun things where we're sitting backwards and the kickstart in this is just a pain overall weight without fuel is 112 kilograms and it's got an 8 liter tank so the same size as the Honda 250RX so great size tank fully weighted you're probably going to be a bit heavier than the 250 um, obviously dry it's already at 250 pounds so we're already at the Honda weight but it looks good has that rear tail light so kind of handy some places allow it front headlight rear tail light does have the ability to adventure a little bit more and obviously has that spark arrest at hand guards. So that's the 350W. What's interesting about I mean Husqvarna's lineup is they have so many choices. So it's hard to keep track of everything to do with Husqvarna. They have so many different options and it really kind of leaves it wide open for interpretation of where you should take these bikes. So the FE 350W is obviously their more trail, off-road race, but leaning towards more adventure race. Whereas the FX, like I said earlier, is a little more race bike. So this one still has the oversized tank. It still is designed for off-road racing, but overall it's gonna be a little bit faster design. So everything about it, is lighter weight things are going to be very similar in the part spec wise still the same exact fork and everything that way is the same all the kind of parts brakes hydraulic clutches everything's going to be the same in that way for like the main components of it the frame subframe everything's very very similar but the big changes are they've taken away a lot of the lights the the non-race features to make this as lightweight and nimble as possible. Overall width of the bike will be slimmed down. The wheels and tires go up to a little bit better quality. The exhaust system has been improved on this one, so it's actually a little bit shorter, so it reduces the weight in the back end, keeping the noise quiet, but also really, really low profile to it compared to what the 350W is. So for the most part, all the parts are very similar between the two models, the FE and the FX. There is a few changes on the physical side, so things like the wheels and tires have switched out to a more aggressive race style. The exhaust system is smaller, more low profile to allow it to be a bit more balanced weight-wise. Things like that. The airbox is super easy to get at. Still hydraulic clutch and still hydraulic disc brakes, but it's only a 260 on the front and a 220 on the rear. So, you know, very, very similar. Everything's pretty much the same between the two for main components. 
Obviously, they have changed a few things. The crankshaft is higher quality, so this is going to be all for reliability and durability. Essentially, they know that this thing is going to be whipped around and treated like a race bike. Obviously, with the crankshaft being changed, they changed the crankcase as well, and this just improves the center of gravity on the bike. As well, the clutch is now a diaphragm steel clutch, so this is going to perform a little bit better, and most importantly, it's going to be more durable. Interestingly enough, they do keep the six-speed, so it's going to be a little bit different tuning, but you still get that six-gear for some of those more faster sections, but everything else is going to be tuned a little faster, a little more aggressive. You do obviously get a map switch on this one, so you're able to change exactly the launch control, traction control, quick shifter, and switching between the two engine maps. It's kind of chaotic what you can do with so little buttons. So what the quick shifter does is it's a sensor on the shift drum and it registers a force from the shift lever and sends a signal to the ECU to ensure a smooth gear change. So that's pretty crazy. Essentially, it's just putting you in the most optimal range. Instead of screaming and being way too high or too low, it'll just pop you up and down a little bit. It prevents false neutrals. You know, everything is going to be a lot better. Obviously, that's only from second gear upwards. First and second is all on you. You got to get it rolling first before it knows what to do. You're just going too slow otherwise. The map switch obviously can be changed on the fly as well, which is really nice. Uh, map 1, which is a standard option, delivers a linear, predictable performance. Map 2 is much more aggressive, and then you'll get improved throttle response, sharper, more explosive power. What's nice is you do get really low-key indication of what is happening, just a green light or a white light. So you know exactly what you're in while you're riding, and you're not going to need to be confused or worried what's happening. Obviously, still has the electric start on the other side. This one, now removing all those kind of unnecessary plastic pieces, lights, all those features, improving the crankcase and changing some things around. They've dropped the weight down to 104 kilograms, which is very impressive. That's a big chunk of weight saved. As well, the fuel tank is actually an 8.5 liter. So this thing will go for a good range. This is, you know, your big desert racing kind of bike to be much more aggressive, go much further, and the race is the most important part of it. Whereas the FE is the more, obviously you can race it, but it is a bit more of the playful thing. The FX looks great, I really like the two-tone or three-tone color where you have the light gray and the white on the bottom. I think they look fantastic. Obviously the FX comes in a 350 and a 450. The FE also comes in a 350W, but the 450 does not come in the W, so you don't get that extra wide range on the 6 gear. You're just going to get so much more power out of the engine. I don't think you'd need it anyway. It probably make, makes up for it in the end. I don't know which bike would be right for me. The FX is probably a more suited bike. I do prefer to go a little faster, especially on race day. But I do ride a lot of gravel and wide range trails. So I don't want something too overkill. The big weight difference is probably the deciding factor for me. I lean towards the FX just on that one little feature. The fact that you can hold more fuel and still be lighter weight is shocking. You know, it's still going to be able to do everything. It would be cool if it had a headlight, but the Honda doesn't have a headlight either. Tail light, I could care less about. There's no real reason to have it. Honestly, it's a little more distracting than anything. The Husqvarna has so many more options. It's ridiculous. Obviously, you've got all the dual sport models and the full two-stroke lineup, which we will talk about in a different story because they're a whole different era of bike. So looking at the two models of the FX350 and the FE350, obviously the FE is strongly different from the Honda CRF250RX or the FX model. This is truly that kind of weekend warrior, Saturdays only or Sundays only 
riding, but not racing in my mind. You're obviously going to get a lot of power with that 350 compared to a standard 250, which is cool. And it will make up for that lacking of riding and built up weight that exists with this bike. But the FX350, that would be a beast. That would be a fast bike. The 450 is obviously, I think, are going to be even more powerful, rip your arms out. But they add a lot of weight and an hour and a half into a race that really adds up a lot, especially for non-pros. I just don't see the huge benefit in it now except for to just have some fun. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, this is the style of racing I do. It's a mix of slow, tight, technical to wide open kind of feel river crossings it's a mix of everything and the fx i think leans more towards it if i were a race focused person obviously lean towards the fx if you are thinking the fe this is a person who wants a fast powerful bike which doesn't kill you at the end of the day i want to be tired i want to feel like i've raced i want to feel like it even on my saturdays where i don't race i just go for a ride i want to feel like i put in some effort and i want to be able to control the bike and put it exactly where I want. The FE is your friendly Sunday ride, but still super powerful, definitely not underpowered by any means, and still super capable. The FX is definitely gonna be a lot snappier, a lot faster, and more durable for that kind of aggressive ride. And that is the internals is the big difference. Going to that stronger, better crank and crank system, you're gonna get way better durability out of it compared to riding an FE like that. So the FE will probably outlast the FX, but if you ride the FE like an FX, you're probably gonna break it much sooner. It's hard to talk about, it's a little confusing. I don't think anyone can go wrong with either option. You'll know where you wanna be very quickly just based on the riding you do. There's a lot of options out there, and um, I think I'm still leaning towards and although I want the 350 because it's a 350, I'd love that extra power. The red of the Honda still looks super sharp. I don't know, what do you guys think? I know a lot of people are saying two stroke, two stroke, two stroke, two stroke. I will do some videos on those. For me, I just like the sound and feel of four strokes. I've rode two strokes. They're fast, they're insane. Like a 300 two stroke is insane. It's hard to keep the front wheel down. Like you have to really move your body in a whole different way. But there is something really nice about four strokes. Consistency, feel, and still tons of power. You just have to run it at a high rev, which a lot of people don't do. All right, guys, hopefully this was uh, somewhat entertaining. This race was fantastic. If every race could be these perfect conditions, warm, but not too hot, and wet, but not too wet, that would be absolutely perfect. Like and subscribe. Let me know any other bike I should check out, because I'm trying to narrow it down over the winter which one I should buy. Thanks, guys.